All right, and we are live. I'll be back here in just a minute. Okay. Greetings, everyone. Better late than never, but greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Red Pill Progressive. I'm your host, James Parana Madonna. I'm here with Michael Hilton of San Francisco, California. And we had big problems on Facebook, but Ga Gary Owens came, I mean, uh, uh, Damien DeWolf Owens came to the rescue. And uh, well, still thinking about Facebook there. Yeah. Yeah, get no, no. Get, Gary is his uh, is his cousin. His his long lost cousin from uh, he lives on the East Coast uh, uh, somewhere in Virginia. I forget. Damien the Wolf Owens came to to the rescue, and he had some stream hour uh, hours, probably a lot more than me. I'm getting my stream my free stream yard hours back this Friday, 20, 20 hours. And, uh, you know, we had problems on Facebook. Facebook is loaded with glitches. Let me tell you something. Facebook is a mess. I think you've got outsourced um, college kids, you know, uh, uh, low-budget college kids running his website as programmers because Facebook is loaded with glitches. Hi, how are you feeling tonight, Michael Hilton? Oh, fuck. I have to ask everybody now I'm in the middle of this whole uh, big imprisonment in this country like it's the Escape from series, Escape from L.A., Escape from New York. Is it okay if I do this? Is it? No. Is this still okay? Is this is this still a thing? Oh, uh, fuck. This has become an anti-state, James. We are living officially it is. in a fucking it, anti state it, it, it's, like, it's like Escape from New York. Escape from L.A. and Mad Max Beyond Thunderballs. I mean Thunderdome. Beyond Good. Thunderdome with, with Tina Turner and uh, who was that, Mel Gibson? Now, uh, I w let's talk about let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about this. Now, that was salt and pepper. Now, let's talk about the, let's talk about the hypocritical feminism in this country where when it comes to making a living, the women want equal pay, hopefully for equal work. But when it comes to social life, they want the man to pay for everything. They want a man to do everything. That, that is not real feminism. Real feminism is equality across the board in every aspect. Otherwise, they're hypocrites. Now, ghosting is when you have a friend could be a girlfriend it could be anybody and you the last time you communicated with them everything was fine everything was peachy keen and then all of a sudden they vanish they mysteriously vanish and they don't reply to you and they don't they don't tell you the reason why they vanished they just vanished and it seems to be happening a lot on the internet especially with single people why it happens I have no idea because, yeah, Mike keeps on going black and coming back. Oh, well. He keeps going black and coming back. Oh, my bad. What's acting out a bunch of shit? My, my, my bad. My bad. Go ahead, buddy. It's a legend. Now, 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 now Damien DeWolf Owens is holding up a steel reserve uh, malt liquor. The 8.1% hey. big boy. And it is super, super fresh. I don't know if y'all can see the freshest day on it, but it says, uh, look at there, November 2nd, 2020. That's the freshest day. So this was basically brewed and bottled not too long ago. So let's crack this bad boy open. Yeah. Not going to pour now, it in the mug. I, I, like, I, I, like, I like what Dr. Dave uh, brought on um, Fandango Friday. He brought a double IPA called... The best case still reserve. He brought an IPA. He brought, he brought a he brought a double IPA that was up. I think it was up to number nine. Uh, that was called the best case scenario. I think I think it was called best case scenario. Hmm. Um. It's a. It, he said any 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 ale that's um an imperial. Or a double, 
IPA always has a higher uh, AB, ABV. Yeah, it should be always at least 8%. Because, yeah, even though this at is called eight, a... At least 8%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even though it says, uh, if I can get the glare off the screen a little bit. But, yeah, this says high-gravity lager, which is another term for malt liquor, um, where they use a lot of fermentable sugars and stuff. Um, this would technically be considered an imperial lager by um, other country standards. But just a quick review of Still Reserve. So... Looks like we lost James. What is what the fuck is happening with that guy, man? I don't understand. Everybody disappearing. We're all becoming oh, he'll zombies. be back. Yeah, he'll be back. All right. So, still We're reserved. All zombies, man. Go ahead. Yeah, so all right. So, still reserve. Yeah, the still reserve. Eight point one percent. The yeah, big boy. When I, so, kind of lost, whenever um, people think of malt liquor. This is one of the ones that's come to mind. I mean, this came out in 1998 by McKinsey River Corporation of San Francisco, California. They also produce St. Ides malt liquor. Um, McKinsey River Corporation, to the best of my knowledge, is no longer around. They haven't been around since the 2000s. But yeah, they brewed and produced this. So um, it's one of the go-tos, so it's 8.1% this particular variant. They have a 6% that uh, Ontario gets in Louisiana, and the 6%, ironically, is sold over in North Carolina. You get the, the silver label, the regular one, and 6%, but they have the triple export that's 8.1%, so that's kind of weird. What does triple export mean? I don't know, but it's much better than the silver label, so... Here's what you get with Still Reserve. Um, it tastes just like a regular American lager beer. It's just stronger at 8.1. So up front, you get a lot of sweetness, and you get a lot of richness. So you're going to get a lot of sweetness from the malt, and you're going to get a lot of sweetness from the other fermentable sugars. Because they use maltose and dextrose in it to give it the fermentable sugars to spike up that alcohol. So, yeah, you get the graininess towards the middle as well, and then... You get a lot of breadiness, like white bread, white bread crust. And surprisingly, for 8.1%, it's got a really good hop bitterness. Um, it's not crisp, clean, and refreshing, but it does have a relatively clean finish. It is smooth, surprisingly. You'd think some 8.1 would be pretty boozy, but it's not. Um, the body and mouthfeel, um, they're medium to heavy. Um, you do get an undertaste of alcohol throughout the whole duration of the sip. But it just reminds you that the alcohol is there, but it's not super boozy. Um, it is pretty high in calories. It's 222 calories per 12-ounce serving. So if you're on a diet, <laughs> run from this. <laughs> so um, it's my favorite high-gravity malt liquor. Um, for the style, it's definitely an excellent representation. So I give it a 100 out of 100, a solid A+. I mean, you can't go wrong with it. Um, I like it out of the bottles better. Um, the cans are pretty good, but nothing quite like a 42 of stories are either just drinking it straight from the bottle or um, pouring it into a glass. Because when you pour it, yeah, it has this color, but it produces a super thick white head. I mean, it looks really appealing when you pour it into the glass. Yeah, it looks like it already has a glass there. No, this is plastic. So what are you drinking? That's all plastic. So what are you drinking here, Michael? Uh, same as always. Nice, no, good old Racer 5 IPA. Uh, it is, uh, as always, 7.5% APV with 75 IBU. And uh, says you hold in your hand. You hold in your hand the beer that changed the direction of IPA uh, in America and helped usher in a new period in American craft beer, proudly brewed by beer lovers for beer lovers, proudly brewed by beer lovers for beer lovers. Racer 5 is a classic West Coast take on the style. Racer 5, go, go. Uh, this one's 10 out of 10. I, I got to stop with 100 out of 100. I got to stop with 100 scale, man. I don't know how to rate on, on 100. I just don't because it's so, it's so broad. If you do 10, if you just stick with 10, it's so easy. It's so easy. 
Uh, so I'm I'm gonna stick with my ten rating to be lazy and entitled, but it's a it's a ten out of ten. Sweet. And then, entitled Californian here, ten out of ten. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. And also, if you look at the still reserve label, you notice it's got a lot going on in the label. So yeah, it says still reserve, and then two eleven. Then you got the SR. This used to say age twenty eight days on the older labels, but I guess either they stopped it or they couldn't prove that. But it says right here. Extra malted barley and select hops for extra gravity. And it says uh, right here, slow brewed for exceptionally smooth flavor. I mean, for something that's 8.1% and a high gravity malt liquor, it is pretty damn smooth, to be honest. Um, now, they are right when it says extra malted barley and select hops for the extra gravity. The hops have nothing to do with gravity. The hops do not take away or add anything to calorie content. That's all with the malt as well as the fermentable sugars. That gives the calorie content. So the only reason why they added the extra hops because the extra gravity, if they didn't, it would be pretty sickly sweet and it would be pretty disgusting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you see it, Pick you up a 42 or pick you up a couple tall boy cans of it and just kick back, relax, and enjoy. Now, Wait, when you first time drink. For different times? Do what? For what? All, all for one time? Pick up a, punch, a, a couple of cans all for one time? Or for yeah. Time? Um, well, I mean, if you want to test it, you know, pick you up a 42 or maybe a 24 ounce tall boy just to see how you react to it. But for me, yeah, I'll get a nice buzz going. I'll definitely feel like I'm shouldn't drive but i won't be too inebriated um what i do is i either pick up a 42 or i pick up two 24 ounce tall boys or i either pick up a four pack of pints and i'll either have three out of the four pints or i might drink all four pints i don't really know it all depends on how i'm feeling but interestingly the plastic is going to be going away here soon they're going to go back to glass 40s okay. here soon for miller course Good. Yeah, they said that they uh, they just, they made the decision to go back to plastic back in 2017, and some have already gone back to glass. Like um, some Miller Coors brands that have already gone back. Uh, Miller High Life has already gone back to the glass 40s. Um, Mickey's Malt Liquor has already gone back to glass. Um, Coors Light, Coors Banquet, um, and. Uh, I think that's the only ones that have gone back to glass so far. The next one's going back to glass is the old English 800. Yeah. Yeah. So not to undercut anybody, but what do you guys think about, um, what do you guys think about the continued issue of ghosting? And, uh, Maybe if girls drank ghosting? a couple more beers, if, if girls drank more beer, would they be a little bit more fucking relaxed? There you go. Be a little bit more approachable. Yeah. Take a little yes. bit more initiative. Really? Not always a guy of having course. to do everything. Go well, ahead. alcohol is alcohol is the best aphrodisiac for a woman, but uh, ghosting is mis is a mystery. Ghosting is a mystery, just like a ghost. I mean, there's no unless somebody explains to you. And says, you know, look, I'm having personal problems, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Um, uh, I'll have to, I'll get back to you in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, or, you know, if somebody explains to you that there's a problem. I mean, you can't be a mind reader uh, unless you you ask the tarot cards or the uh, divining rods. But, you know, you can't be like a mind reader and know why a person vanishes. You know, the best thing for you to do is to have your own hobbies, your own interests, your own life, and just focus on what, what's beneficial to you. And don't worry about thing, don't worry about women at all. It's got a fucking stigma when you're not about worried about it, and then it happens. Say it does happen to somebody, and that it happens anyway. It happens. It happens. Even when they have their life all together, it, it still could happen to them. And that's just, uh, I think I've even been there even in the past. Uh, everything seems hunky-dory, but it will still happen anyway. Uh, so then, what is that? Well, so it was meant to be. That they have their life priorities structured or yeah. 
Well, you can't you can't force anything. If it was meant to be, it will be. You know, and, and you can't force anything. I mean, uh, um, um, if a person like when my mother was alive, one of her fortune teller friends, she was very good. She was very good looking. This one girl named Lena, and Lena, who had she had quite a rack on her, and uh, she said to me. <laughs> If if a woman if a woman is really into you, it's very easy to figure it out. She stays with you, talking to you for the whole for the night. She she hangs out with you for the night. She says it's that simple. If if the if the chick don't hang out with you, then forget about it. Yeah, um, you know, almost you know? trying but, to get but, two dives rolling from two yeah. continents apart from each other. Uh, yeah, but the, see, but the feminists are like they're a lobbying group started by people like Gloria Steinem and uh, uh, Betty, Ugh. Fritt, uh, ugly, ugly looking lesbians, basically. What, what's her name? Betty for Dan, Bella Abzug. Oh, all, like all, all, all ugly, man hating feminists, uh, neo, neoliberals. Uh, they started it, and they sabotage uh, many heterosexual relationships because the divorce rate is high. Correct? The, the divorce rate is very high. Um, you know what's funny? Not to change the subject. I I saw um, I saw a one in red where it says chat on my phone, and when I hit the chat icon. It took me out of the show. I thought that was weird because, like, it, it said there was nothing there when I hit that. And then when I hit the arrow, maybe I hit the wrong, maybe I hit the wrong icon. So maybe, I, you see, it, it's, it looks different. Like, in other words, on my desktop, there's an icon for me to add an avatar, but on the phone, there's no, there's no, like, there's no button to add an avatar. An avatar. Unless I can only add an avatar if I'm hosting the show, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Damien sees a button on his side for an avatar, perhaps. I, I don't know. On the bottom. No. Oh. oh, I mean, I completely agree with everything that you're saying. I mean, even though I'm married, yeah, before I became a married man, yeah, I used to chase what women, but uh, I hate to say it, if if Mike just keeps chasing women and he doesn't get his game on, the only chicks he's going to be getting are his left and right. So wait a second. So Whoa, you're, oh, your your ears, your oh, hearing is good. I appreciate being chased instead, but how do you like, like keep it going? Uh, it's just how do you keep getting chased? It's like making a friend and then no, it's it's, it's what you do. It, it it's what you do. You see, chasing I do no is. When you chase, you're only giving them free validation to in, to inflate their egos. No, and, no, and when that happens, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're, they're going to play mind games with you. They're going to play mind I games. Don't. I'm fucking up. So what what Damien is trying to say is you got to be cool and smooth, oh, like cool. like the Dosekis, like the Dosekis man. Yeah, well, be stay smooth. thirsty, well, my friends. On back from getting the beer, but let me get my beer. Let me get my beer. We'll be right back. Oh yeah, get a beer. Yes, I don't always, I don't always do this, but when I do, stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty, my friend. Stay thirsty. Or you could be, like, like, be like uh, Keith Stone from uh, back of the day. Remember the uh, the Keystone commercials, which was uh, Coors Brewing's economic brand. So they decided to introduce Keith Stone. You're so smooth, Keith Stone, with a 30 pack of Keystone light up. Oh, always. Wait, 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 wait. 
Well, that one of the guys who came on when 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 Jay was about to end the show, he um he had Pabst Blue Ribbon. He said Pabst Blue Ribbon to him was better tasting than Coors or Budweiser, um, or even even a Coors Banquet. Now, I don't know about that because I had Pabst Blue Ribbon one time and it tasted like light beer to me. I don't yeah, know. I mean, yeah, I can understand where you're coming from. See, regular beers, regular American beers, they're going to taste like um, they're going to taste like light beer. I mean, not like light water, but they're going to have a light body light flavor because they're modeled out after a uh, Czech style Pilsner, which is known to be light body, light in flavor, but still be crisp, clean, and refreshing. So they're going to be based off that. So, you know, your Budweiser, your Coors Banquet, your Miller High Life, and your Pabst Blue Ribbon, yeah, they're going to taste like that. Now, if I had to pick out of the lineup of the four, um, if I was just looking for just a regular old reliable standby beer, I'd pick Budweiser. If I wanted a regular beer with like, you know, a little complexity, a little roastiness to it, I'd go with Coors Banquet. Um, if I'm one, just keep it cheap, some keep it, keep it yeah, 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 the alcohol is kicking in. <laughs> keep it something cheap, something economical, I'd go with High Life. Now, if I wanted something unique to impress people, I mean, PBR is unique in its own way, so they all fit the bill, but if I had to say which one probably has the most flavor out of the four, probably Coors Banquet has the most amount of flavor out of all four. Budweiser used to be a pretty robust beer. Like when you crack the bottle or crack the can, you could smell the beer to it. Like it had a robustness to it when you cracked it. And when you pour it into a glass, you know, it was even better when you pour it into a glass. Now you get a Budweiser, you crack the can or crack the bottle, you don't get that robustness. And when you pour it into the glass from the can or from the bottle, you just you don't get that robustness anymore. Like it still tastes the same. The flavor profile is the same. It's just it lacks robustness. It's watered down. Yeah, it's got more flavor than a Bud Light, but the overall flavor, it's just you could tell that it's just it's not what it used to be. Yeah. Well, a lager, a lager is going to be more robust and darker and heavier, or well, should be, than a light beer or a pilsner. You know, any lager, any lager. I don't care if it's a domestic or Mexican or or whatever. You know, I mean, I noticed that, like, if you take um, like any of the Modelos and Dos Equis, those are usually lagers. Right, Modelo right. Especial, uh, uh, Dos Equis Ambar, Dos Equis Lager. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the heaviest lager I ever had was Sapporo Black, which was a black lager, but that's probably roasted roasted barley used. Yeah, out of all the lagers, this is probably the heaviest lager. I mean, look at this color. This is a, a very deep golden you can even argue like an orange gold color i mean yeah. this is very dark for a lager oh. yeah now 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 yeah now jay had killian's irish red which is not even own which which is not even in business it's own it was bought by a big macro a big macro bought killian's a long time ago. yeah i think cores bought it yeah, Killian's is not even in business anymore. Uh, um, then you have uh, Blue Moon was bought by a macro too, right? Yeah, I think Blue Moon's owned by Miller Coors, I think. Or no, is Blue Moon owned by Anheuser Busch? No, I, I think Miller Coors owns Blue Moon. Yeah, I mean, a lot of macro companies have bought these smaller companies out. Um, I guess they, they have a deal with them to keep the original recipe and the, the maintain the quality uh, of the product. Um, um, I mean, it doesn't always happen. You know, like, like a fast food chain from Miami called 
polio polio tropical a cuban guy started it and when i first had it in florida they gave you big portions and the food was great then a corporation bought he sold out to a corporation and they started giving one fraction of the portion of everything and it, it wasn't quite the same it just wasn't quite the same oh yeah you're right so i mean some of the best some of the best food i've ever gotten was from locally owned businesses like um we have some pretty good local joints around here like um you've heard me talk about barberitos which is a really good um taco and burrito joint i mean if you love tacos and you love burritos and you like to get chips and cheese with whatever it is you because they give you a free big bag of chips with your meal you go to barberitos if you want some really good like burgers and fries or some wings and you don't want to go to like Buffalo Wild Wings or anything, you go to Beef O'Brady's. They're a local joint. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. Um, then we have some really good barbecue places. Like um, I told you about um, Ridgewood Barbecue, which is up in Bristol, but on the way going towards Bluff City and Elizabethan. That is an iconic barbecue joint here in this part of town and then also um there's one here in kingsport that's been around for years but ever since it's undergone new management it's just it's gone to shit but pratt's barbecue and what made it so iconic was out front there was a uh, a native american and i forget he had a name but he was what made the restaurant so iconic because he was very unique looking well one day, um, I guess just where he was just really old, his head started sinking in like this. So what they did was they removed the head, put it in the restaurant to keep, you know, the originality to it. And then they put a new head on him. And ever since the new management's taken over, they don't really adhere to really good quality control standards, and they sure as hell do not adhere to food safety. So I hope the new management that it's under now, that they eventually either get fired or they just quit. Because it used to be a good barbecue place. Now it's just, it's shit. When you said head, you're talking about a cigar store Indian, a statue? Yeah, like a statue. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good sized statue, about 15, 20 feet. Oh, oh, a statue. I thought you meant like, a real Native American. They, they beheaded him. And, oh, okay. Yeah, right, beheading so. still going on here in Tennessee. Yeah, we've progressed, but. <laughs> but no, no we don't, we mean, don't behead I mean, Native Americans. Not anymore, at least. Tennessee, if no, like because Tennessee they, is going here, whereas California is going here. Going a little bit. How is California doing? Uh, shit, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question, James. Uh, just what about California up. dreaming? Yeah. California dreaming by the mamas and the papas. That, oh, uh, yeah. People, do, people don't fucking people, change. I don't, I don't expect this state to change. No, how this state will fucking stay the same so long as the people don't fucking change. And that's just um. me. Well, if there's a split and you have urban California, which is regular California, and you have rural California, which splits up and becomes rural California, then we'll be looking at a different story. Fuck no. You Sorry, know, man. you know, there are people that, that, you know, my ex, you know, my ex did from San Diego. There are people from the San Diego area that are sick and tired of the, the high cost of living. And and the twenty five hundred dollar uh, a month rent for two bedroom apartment, they're they're moving over the border to to northern Baja these these uh, seaside towns in northern Baja Mexico, and they're they're building homes, and and they're commuting because they're right near the border, and and they're and they're they build beautiful freaking homes in northern Baja, like right. Like past, right past Tijuana, but by the ocean. Yeah. And, oh yeah. No, exactly. I make one dollar ten million fucking times. Yeah, it was like um, uh, 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 uh Ens yeah, and there's uh, Ens um, Rosarita, uh, Puerto Nuevo, Ensenada, 
you know, that area by uh, by the sea, by the the, the beach. Um, not near Tijuana because Tijuana is like, you know, they'll 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 rob you over there. But um, um, yeah, Mexico. And, it used to be a very beautiful place, but the gangs and the cartels have run amok of it. Yeah, I guess I guess they're since Tijuana is a, a border town. I guess the cartels are very much, very much uh, uh, in charge of all the all Other. the border towns. Uh, yeah, same nice thing with Juarez. Oh, Juarez like is parts and there are shitty parts, you know. Yeah, El Paso's by Juarez. Yeah, but <laughs> it has some nice parts. Even though they had the fucking incident a couple of years ago, it's um at the mall, El, uh, people just going past, and it was drastic. And people saying these numbers are gonna suck after this, and they were pretty bad numbers. El Paso has. El Paso has some rough parts, but it has some good parts. So it's yeah. Uh, well, you, you, it's don't wanna go, you, don't, you don't want to go. You don't. You don't want to go to Juarez. You, you don't want to spend the oh, uh, Saturday or Sunday in Juarez. No, <laughs> you, you no, no, you don't. I mean, even though I don't agree with the way you know Mexico runs, the way that their country is being run now, but. However, as a socialist, I do believe in this little thing called the right to self-determination. So, right now with the gangs and the cartels running amok of everything, if they honestly feel like they need another Mexican revolution or they need to take up arms and fight against the gangs and the cartels, that's their right to do so. I mean, it's their country. If that's what they feel is necessary to fix their problems, then so be it. But they just need to know that, you know, by taking on the gangs and the cartels the way that they're taking them on by armed force, that nothing is going to come of it. But it doesn't really seem like at this particular point that, that really is a deterrent in terms of the Mexican people taking up arms and fighting against them. I mean, if that's how they feel, then, you know, by all means, if they think that's how they're going to fix their problems, then honestly, so be it. I mean... You got that particular aspect, but then you also you have another aspect in Mexico, which is legalizing all drugs, regardless of what drugs they are, across the board to cut off the heads of the gangs and cartels. Now, would that work? Time will tell. I mean, we could argue about you know the principles, the theories behind it all day, but until it's actually implemented, we don't really know. But I mean, I know Mexico has been through a lot throughout its whole entire history. And I bet if you ask the average, you know, person in Mexico about how they feel, they don't want the gangs and the cartels there because they're basically forcing people to flee Mexico and come to America illegally to where they don't have time to go through the legal process to become American citizens. So a lot of Mexicans, they really don't want to leave their country. They're actually very prideful of their country, regardless of what you may think about it as an outsider, but you know, people who live there as an insider, they feel one way that they don't want to leave it, but the gangs and cartels are forcing them to flee the country. So I honestly think that what it is they're going to do, they're doing it for not only the interest of themselves, but they're doing it for the interest of their country in general. So we'll see what happens. But the gangs and cartels, they, they've got to be stopped. There's no debating that or questioning that. They've got to be stopped. No way around that. And they have, and they have literally billions upon billions of dollars, you know, resources, uh, monetary resources, uh, to get anything they want now, what what puzzled me is that when I used to watch Vincente Fox, former president of Mexico, watch his videos, he seemed pretty left wing and progressive. But when he was president, the corruption still existed in Mexico. So I don't know if if he's being hypocritical. By, by being so far left and, 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 and progressive, you know, considering the fact that he was the president of Mexico. 
um, in, in, you know, not too distant past. I, I mean, if you were that progressive and that left wing, you would like do something about the corruption and crime in your country. Right. But yeah, the gangs saying. and the cartels, they've got everyone in their back pockets. They got the police, they got the lawyers, they got the politicians all in their back pockets because the way Mexico is now, that really is about the only way you have any sort of income is working for the gangs and cartels. That's really about the only way that people have income. Yeah, they can go to the jobs that have been exported to Mexico because of neoliberalism, but oh, God, is that really guys. going to be able to support not only you as an individual, but your family? No, it's not. So they've been put in this situation to where, yeah, even though it's morally and ethically wrong, but still they're, they're very devout individuals in terms of making sure that La Familia is taken care of no matter what. To where, yeah, they may look at, you know, their mothers and their fathers in a certain aspect, but at the end of the day, they're going to provide for their families one way or another. Now, no, those I, individuals who are doing it, yeah, wrong. they may be like, yeah, we know what we're doing is wrong morally and ethically, and we're contributing to the drug problem. At the end of the day, I got to provide for my family. So well, that's it, what it's not a clear the- black and white situation. So don't that's what they do. We have puddles, though. We keep talking about the border. What about the fucking puddles, man? What? What about the tunnels? Oh, they do. Oh, they have air conditioned tunnels. They have tunnels. Oh yeah. They have very. They have very nice tunnels, from what I understand. <laughs> I never. I've never yeah. been in one, but I hear they're 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 quite state of the art tunnels. But what, what I was going to say, no, they just, they tunnel under the wall. The wall is, is the wall is a laughing stock to, to them. Mm-hmm. But what I was going to say was, was in Colombia, South America, they do the same thing. They take care of, of the city. Like, let's say Medellin. Uh, Medellin was, was the home city of, supposedly, supposedly the late Pablo Escobar. So, well, Medi, I think Med- he was from Medellin. Now, Medellin is a, is a, you know, like in other words, my, my ex-wife was Colombian. She used to tell me that they, they took very good care of the people from their region. Very good care of them. So if you have very, if you have very poor people and no middle class, and somebody who's wealthy, regardless of how they got their money, somebody who's very wealthy is taking good care of their hometown or, or region. And, and there's, mo- there's, there's mostly poor people. The, the poor people are going to, they're going to be cheering the, the person who's, who's, who's providing for them. You know what I mean? Because they're 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 destitute, and uh, in a way, that's what the um, the mob was doing in um, in New York. They were having block parties and barbecues, and you know they were they were providing lots of nice things for the people in the neighborhood. They were doing the yeah. same thing. Oh yeah, I mean, here in my neck of the woods. Um, police forces in Nash, or no, not Nashville, Asheville, down in North Carolina, they slashed supplies not only for first responders, but also regular civilians. I mean, in my neck of the woods, although things have not gotten as bad as some of the major cities, but I got a bad feeling things are going to get worse because here's all I've been looking at it. I mean, yeah. The looting and the rioting is one thing, but the looting and the rioting is an unfortunate side effect of a voice that has been trying to make themselves heard, but they've not been heard. 
And it really honestly seems like that the only way, not, I'm not using this as a justification, I'm just using it as an explanation to explain why it's going on, but the looting and the rioting is a symbology of violence. And it seems like the only way Americans ever really learn anything or actually take anything seriously is when it outbreaks into violence. It seems like it's the only way Americans learn is through violence. I mean, hell, we were founded on a violent revolution. The reason why our country is so big is because of a violent ethnic genocide against Native Americans. So we understand violence not only domestically, but hell, if you look at our history, we've been at war for over 200 plus years of our fucking history, man. So we're not only good at violence here at home, we're good at violence everywhere throughout the world. We've gotten years and years of practice. Yeah, so it wouldn't really be out of the realm of possibility. It makes total fucking sense as to why the only reason why Americans learn is through violence. Well, the, the, the looting and the rioting is, is a result of the established establishment politicians in both parties ignoring the, ignoring the masses. Ignoring the average exactly. person in the United States, the mainstream masses, they're being ignored. The poor, exactly. definitely, the poor is definitely being ignored, has been ignored since day one. And people are so angry, they're just, they've had enough. They've had enough. Nobody will listen to them. Nobody cares. You know, nobody cares about, about like the homeless, that, that time that Ronald Reagan close the mental institutions and let all the men, the mental patients on the streets homeless that that's how it first started you know the homeless exactly. population yeah Ray, reagan a republican closed the mental institutions and these people were put on the streets uh it it it's always comes down to now the democratic party is really slightly the lesser of the two evils they're yeah, really not that slightly. Bad. Yeah, slightly. Now, Wait, what's going to happen? We're going to talk about beer and girls, man. Beer and uh, girls. Uh, now, what's going to happen? Friday night. What's going to happen is that the militia men and with the Second Amendment are going to become the new American heroes. And I'm going to I'm going to say this on Sunday. In my prediction, the the people that were demonized. And called and called gun nuts, the mo the militiamen might very well be the new American heroes. Well, yeah, you're right to a point, but now those particular individuals they've turned more into what's considered the the counter protest or like the counter revolution. But you are right in terms of when. When it comes to really the looking as to who has been disenfranchised and which voices have not been heard, it's been the masses and the poor people. Well, it seems like, yeah, people have tried going about it the peaceful way, but either nothing has changed or they're doing what's been happening now where police are literally fanning the flames and antagonizing peaceful protesters to turn violent. Yeah, that's why like I'm saying. American, yeah, that's why I say the only reason why Americans either seem to really give a shit or learn is through violence. When it breaks out into something, then they learn. Now, when you're talking about the uh, the militiamen being the new patriotic heroes, yeah, that's right to a point. But here's why it really won't. Yeah, they'll be heroes in terms of you know maintaining peace and order while police and military could not but when they literally made threats against peaceful protesters that's going to ruin their case completely no way around they're going to say people with any even the most lick of sense are going to say you know what yeah it's cool that you're maintaining peace and order when the police and military are not able to do so. But the fact that you're doing the same thing and advocating for the same thing that the police are doing now against peaceful protesters, you've lost. 
you're you're not going to win my support over that. Yeah, because because it's it's against the constitution. That people have a right to assembly, a peaceful assembly. To they have a right to protest, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I just like like we have a right to voice our opinions on the internet and not have somebody like the CEO of, t of Twitter or Mark Zuckerberg uh, put us in, in, in temporary prison for speaking mm -hmm. our mind, mm -hmm. you know? Now, uh, Wait, um, um, what happened with our live video? No, I'm trying to have a chance. So, well, <laughs> what kind of beer you have? Michael, Michael, what kind of beer you have? You, you went oh, and got yeah. beer. I'm going to get that beer, but uh, what do you, I'm really worried about, and as much as I can't stand this guy in the Oval Office, I'm really fucking worried about an Antifa president and what an Antifa president would do. What, oh, that, well, I forget get Antifa. Oh, forget well, Antifa. Beer, what, would an, what would an Antifa president do? You, you oh, guys, forget you Antifa. Guys. Antifa is so irrelevant that we honestly should not even be paying attention to them. I mean, yeah, they're willing to send up the anti-fascists, but are they really a prevalent left-wing group? No. That's why I say don't even really worry about them. They're not even really involved, and they're not even really going to do anything. Yeah, they talk the talk, they walk the walk, but that's why I say, you know, forget about Antifa. But anyway, yeah, that, but that to what you were saying. Time, you know, that happens every time. You know, the Tea Party came up and they won. And then we had the Occupy movement, we lost. Trump came up, he won. We have Antifa. <laughs> And we're losing. What's going on, man? Well, in a nutshell, this has unified America to a certain point because I think now people are beginning to see the real face of capitalism and that it's failing and that it's in decay because Vladimir Lenin said fascism is capitalism in decay. Well, what is fascism? The rise of corporate control, the rise of the police state, that's fascism. It's doing anything, anything and everything it can in its power to not only suppress, but control the population in all regards, to maintain the failing existing order. Well, here's what they have failed to realize. See, there was a plan to try to implement martial law because of COVID-19. That failed miserably. So now they're going to try to use the um, the rioting and the protests to implement martial law on this. Since this, you know, failed previously, they're going to use this. But little do they know, they're going to end up shooting themselves in the foot because various governors threatened the police and military against COVID-19 dissenters, and that pissed people off. That was the spark that got all this going. Well, now that they're using the police and the military against protesters, violent and nonviolent. That's fanning the flames and adding fuel to the fire to where it's unifying people to the point to where they're saying, you know what, maybe what they've been saying about capitalism is correct. Or maybe what they've been saying that, you know, there really is blatant racism in America and that everything is really based on a class antagonism. So we are beginning to see the unifying of America to a point, but what we're really lacking here is, yeah, it's one thing to have unity, but what we're severely lacking is organization to where, like I'd say, if these protests escalate, and they will, because yep. of the use of police and the military against its own citizens, <sighs> What they're going to have to do is they're going to have to organize and not only police and govern ourselves as individuals, we're going to also have to institute our own people's government alongside the already existing bourgeois apparatus. So that way, if it ever breaks out to where if we win, we can take over the existing apparatus and have a true people's government. That's what we're kind of seeing emerging, but yet there's just no real organization here and that's just what i find disappointing now will something come of this yes absolutely like right now there's calls for defunding police left and right as well as stripping them of their military gear to where they can't be like paramilitary thugs which i do support because like i said at this point 
we should honestly govern ourselves and police ourselves to see, are we really capable as human beings of policing and governing ourselves so we can have a people's police force and a people's government? Or do we need to go back to square one to see what it really takes to have that? That's just the way things are progressing right now. Because obviously we can instill our trust in the existing government to not only protect and defend us, how we can even instill that trust in the police to protect and defend us. As we've clearly seen, they don't stand on the side of protesters. They don't stand on the side of us. They stand on the side of their masters. They're nothing more than mere puppets, and their fucking strings are being pulled by their puppet masters. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the oligarch, the, the the new world order. They the, they want this fascism. They they want the police state because they're they're simply. Uh, Part of the top one percent. It's as simple as that. I mean, uh, but the warning signs were out there for for decades. I mean, uh, ever since Henry Kissinger made his statement back in the day. I mean, the signs have been out there. Uh, you can't you can't trust Bill Gates and his wife at all. Um, and See what's happening with social media. They're 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 trying to censor the the opposition to the establishment. Anybody who opposes the establishment, they want to censor you. Exactly. And, um, uh, the I saw a video of New York cops firing tear gas and rubber bullets at peaceful protesters. Yeah, I saw and- it with my own eyes. Yeah, that is why we have the Second Amendment to where it literally says, hey, you have the right to keep and bear arms, but it also implements to where, you know, hey, if things are not going the way that you feel as they should be going, trash this. Get rid of your government. Take your country back. Take your government back and it's to the whole new one. Because honestly, at this point, we've come to the point to where it's time for that because... It's clearly been shown as plain as the nose on one's face. There is absolutely no way, no way in hell that change is ever going to come from above or it's ever going to change from within. No way. And if you believe that, you're a fool. Yeah. Now, Mr. Michael Hill, what do you got there? That, that, that's true. That's true. Uh, got the Fair Republic. Another Bear Republic beer, and uh, you guys will like this one. Challenge series. I've only had a couple challenge series. 21 challenge series, 21 by Bear Republic out of NorCal. And it is a juicy IPA with bitter gold, strata, and peco hops. It is clocking in at 6.9% ABV. Certified independent, bing, bing, bing. It's not a blue bottle, it's not a green bottle, it's not even a brown bottle, it's a can of craft beer. It's certified independent. I think Damien likes that one. It's a huge ass can of, of craft beer. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. Uh, they have a really nice fucking can. Uh, James, if you like the beer, what do you, what do you guys think about that can? It's just amazing. It's, co- it's uh, colorful, you know. I mean, uh, well, let me see what it looks like when you pour it. Yeah, nothing about oh, cans. Right. I mean, I some like- people hate cans, but you know, even if you have a brown bottle or a green bottle or a clear bottle, there is no way that beer is ever going to get skunked by being in a can. As long as it's stored properly, that beer will last for a long, long time. As long as it's stored properly. What well, say cans are the best way to go about it, but nothing wrong with a brown bottle. And nothing wrong with a clear bottle or blue bottle that's maintained well. It's just that a lot of them aren't. And then you ship them over long areas with the whole TEU on the on the container ships. And I don't know, man. Pouring out very, very nicely. Uh, this has no IBU on it, guys. But that is not necessarily a poor marker. Uh, three finger white head. It looks orange as a Bear Republic beer can be. You guys would really like Bear Republic. They make some amazing beers like 
Oh, I, I missed, I missed my beer menu for the night. Oh, bullshit! No, I didn't. I came across some Bear Republic beer. Uh, that looks oh, good. Man. It looks good. Dark it's like a reddish. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it does. It does. That. That's good. I like to have IPA in a pint glass sometimes. I like an IPA in a good pint glass. Well, a real yeah, pint glass, pint. not 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 the so-called pint glasses that the bars have, but a real, an actual pint, a, a 16, 16 ounces, a 16 ounce yeah, yeah. glass. Yeah, and a nice yeah. one, a, a nice looking one too. Uh, yeah, yeah two reddish fingers, brown two color. Finger Orange high body beer, good glazing. Hazy. Uh, uh, they chilled the shit out of this motherfucker prior to serving, so that's what I mean by glazing. Uh, Trader Joe's, uh, sir, you know, really, really does a good job with chilling their beer. It's got the aroma. You know, on, only three, only two or three Trader Joe's in New Jersey are allowed to have a liquor department. And guess what? The uh, one by me is not is not one of them. Uh, Bastards say that. The governor, look, hey, governor. Oh, no, the Mr. Bean looking motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, bitter yeah gold you know, the bitter gold is getting the getting yeah. the strata hops on this one, guys. Yeah, they got these right, these organizations. The, these these old bags with curlers in their hair. These old uh, uh, mad. Uh, uh, what is it? Mothers against drunk driving. Here, 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 here. Mothers against drunk driving. It's organizations like you that is uh, oppressing all liquor departments from existing in, bi in big retail stores and big retail stores as well as small stores. Come on. Stores come hey, presto, presto on this beer, by the way. Nice. Uh, you know, good glazing, uh, presto, presto, what do I say, what do I say, uh, nice lacing, nice seaside feel, you're getting a jelly apricot, uh, still bitter, hoppy rush to the beer, it's amazing, uh, it's just a high yeastiness leading to a strong malt backbone, paving to a nice hop resin on the beer, it tastes a lot like they put a lot of apricots on there. The apricot is huge. It's in that jelly, that jelly in the beer. Uh, it just it tastes a lot like jelly. Eric would like that. It tastes a lot like jelly. Uh, uh, hazy, no, yeah, juicy, juicy IPA. It's definitely a West Coaster. Do, not, do they uh, use apricots? They use apricots. Do in they, 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 they do use, use apricots. apricots. I like uh, apricots. I like. Uh, apricots I like apricots. good. And uh, oh, now, somebody leaving in the middle of a review, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I, I just all the hops. Don't know what peck well, I, is. No, I, I no, he's he, no, he's here. I like I, I like a good hazy dark, full body craft beer. I like hoppy beers. Uh, it looks good. It looks really good. Um. um Oh, glad it's an orange bomb. It does. It looks uh, really good. One, two, three. It's, it, it, uh, ten, uh, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. It's a solid 9 out of 10, guys. It's it's awesome. If you guys like apricot beer, you guys like a slight bitterness and a bit of a roastiness in the beer. And uh, as, Damien, as Damien, uh, wait, that's not Damien. As uh, Damien said earlier, the, the, uh, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Uh, th this is awesome. It's a, it's a nine out of ten. A plus. A plus. Oh wow! How about sweet? That? Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. Before I was talking with James, I was talking with my aunt, and I was just you know talking with her because I haven't talked with her in quite a while. My aunt on my dad's side, and I was telling her that. What I got to In all honesty, in this in this decade, another revolution or another civil war. It, it is coming. At this point, there's no way of avoiding it. it it's going to happen. What? And there's a variety of reasons as to why it's going to happen. The fanning the flames of racism, the fanning the flames of police brutality, and just the overall lack of cohesiveness of capitalism, seeing the clear class antagonism is how capitalism really is, that's why it's going to happen. Because people are going to realize just that the system never worked for them. It 
honestly never has and it never will. So I would say, yeah, there will be a civil war. There will be another revolution in this country. But what will come of it is going to be completely different. It's not going to be 1776 all over again. Yeah, there, there will be that kind of renaissance type thing going on. But I ultimately think what you will see is a rediscoverance of what it means to be a free human being. But not only being a free human being, but also caring for other people as well. Where, you know, there are other rights tacked on to what already exists. Kind of like the, the second bill of rights that FDR proposed. I definitely foresee something like that to where it's recognized to the point to where they see health care, education, jobs, the right to a livable wage, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, as human rights, just like all the other rights that we have by the Bill of Rights. That's the kind of socialism you will see in America that rises from the ashes after the next civil war or revolution. I definitely foresee that. Now, will the imperialism and the war stop? I would say yeah, because you're going to see a big shift in terms of what it really means to have a true national security that by having an empire, by having all these bases throughout the world and treating countries like shit to where they all think hate us, you're going to see that gone. Because they're going to be like, you know what, that undermines our national security more than it does anything else. So you know what, if, if that's what it takes, just leaving these places and saying to hell with it, you know what, you're going to see it. They're going to be like, if that's what it takes and it's that easy to not only save time, money, and lives, we're going to do it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it it was only it was it was only bound to happen. You know, look how many decades have gone by with business as usual, the same old corruption, the same old lies, the same old bullshit. Now, now we have an aberration, you know, uh, 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 a a literal cartoon character in the White House that is there, at a de like almost like a demonic presence in the flesh. And he's there because of the apathy of the American voters in 2016. Oh, because yeah, if, if the more, if the more people from the mainstream actually vote, the less of a chance a Republican has of getting elected. That, that's a known fact. So what happened, what happened was the DNC, of course, sabotaged Bernie Sanders and, and, and Jill Stein because she wasn't invited to the debate. So you had, you had the frying pan into the furnace. Mm -hmm. That those were the choices you had, and people were not crazy about those choices. I'm talking about normal, intelligent Americans. I'm not talking about all the the, the nuts, you know, with the with the American flag in one hand, and uh, maybe a Nazi flag in the other hand, or a Confederate flag on their pickup truck, or whatever, yeah, screaming out the here. window. Yeah, yeah. Not, I mean, I don't mean the the extremists. I'm talking about you know the average common sense Americans, uh, like the peaceful protesters. They didn't have much of a choice. So they, a lot of people, knew that the system is rigged. Mm -hmm. I mean, they know it. They're not stupid. They know. They know the system is rigged. You know. Like when my grandmother used to say, "Yeah, you can't fight City Hall. I says, well, who told you that? Well, you know, I grew up hearing it. I says, oh, okay. So that's like being a pacifist. So, so you end up doing nothing. You can fight you City Hall. I mean, City Hall is a council of human beings, and they have to still operate in the confines of the law just like other people have to. So, I mean... If you are in the right and you've done your legal research, you can beat City Hall. You can you can defeat anyone. And that, that's part of the problem here is 
the system has literally made it to where people feel as though they're so disenfranchised they honestly stand no chance of defeating it. That is blatantly not true. If push comes to shove and you've done your research and you know you're in the right, you can defeat them. All it takes is a little research and a little know-how. You can beat them. Yeah, because no, no human being is above the law and the and the constitution. No, absolutely. No, no, no organization. Yeah, absolutely. Is, is technically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, absolutely. I mean, like, like when Donald Trump says, "I'm going to send tanks, tanks, armored vehicles, the military into the into this into the major cities." That you can't do that. That's up to the governors to to even call the national guard out. It's up to the governors to do that. He can't, he can't like send the military, and he's not the dictator of the United States, Donald Trump. You know, you you he he just feels that he can do anything he wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, he feels as though he can do that. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. But little does he know. Yeah, he gained points by calling out the crazy governors for all this COVID-19 bullshit. Yeah, he gained points. And so did Republican governors for calling out the crazy Democrats. However, now things are shifting to where, yeah, even though there's still this quarantine and lockdown still in place, they're making an exception for the First Amendment. So that's like their way of undermining the Republicans. So they're always going to be undermining. That's part of how bourgeois democracy works, is one faction is always going to be doing everything in their power to undermine the other faction, pure and simple. The Republicans did that to undermine the Democrat faction of the bourgeois class. Now with these protests, that's the Democrats' way of undermining the Republican faction. That's just how bourgeois politics works work but well anyway well, you know doc even dr fauci changed his mind again you know they the the doctors the doctors um withdrew the 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 uh the dangerous so-called dangerous side effects of hydroxychloroquine because they weren't doing scientific double blind placebo placebo-controlled study to determine that hydroxychloroquine was bad, was, was, was dangerous to a person's health. It was just an observation. It was just based on observations. It wasn't based on science. So they withdrew everything they said about hydroxychloroquine, which means that internationally and Donald Trump got the right information that hydroxychloroquine really does work and did he uh, take it with even zinc, though, though did he take it with zinc though James? you're supposed to take it with zinc but they never mentioned yeah, medical doctors zinc? medical doctors never mentioned zinc because they're they're pro drugs they're they're big pharma they're in bed with big pharma but you're supposed to take it with high amounts of zinc so then Trump didn't you're take it with any zinc Well, I mean, hey, I, I, I feel positive side effects since I've been taking 50 milligrams of zinc. I yeah, mean, I mean, a nice multivitamin. Yeah. I'm taking them all. I'm taking like 10,000 units of D, 10,000 units of A. Uh, yeah, but two, you guys uh, know Trump does not take any fucking vitamins. So uh, I'm just like, Holy shit, he just took hydroxychloroquine uh, just right off the bat. Um, well, right. well, just know, even if he did do that, he just did that to undermine his opponents. Not because he really genuinely cares. He just, he looks at politics in the way of running a government as running a business. I mean, yeah, I guess you could look at that, but here's the problem you're going to run into. I mean, it's one thing to have competition, and it's one thing to make your opponents look like 
you know, they're a bunch of imbeciles. But where he's lacking is he's not doing it for the greater good of the country. And that's where he's severely lacking. He's doing it for his own greedy self-interest, which is what I find very ironic with these people is, yeah, they're capable of doing good, but they're not doing it for the true greater good. They're doing it for their own selfish, greedy interest. Who are just like, well, I mean, I guess to some people it's like, well, if you can do good or even do good at all, I mean, I guess it's fine. But where I stand is, yeah, it's good, but you're only being good to a point. Because if you truly are doing it for the greater good, you're doing it selflessly, not for a selfish manner. And that's where he's lacking. I mean, we were having a heated debate at work the other night about social media and how I was saying, you know, yeah, Donald Trump is not the right for taking on social media, but people are saying, oh, he's going to lose, he's going to lose corporate fascism, blah, 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 blah. I'm just thinking, you've been conditioned and trained to think that he will lose because of corporate fascism. You've been conditioned to think that. Forget that. Forget what you're conditionally taught and ingrained. Forget that. Throw that out the window. That bears no relation on anything. If you think that it won't happen, it will never happen. But if you think that change will happen, it will happen. And here's why I say, yeah, an, an executive order doesn't give new laws, but that's according to the Constitution. Now, what an executive order can do is the executive branch is the chief executive officer of the country. He is only in charge of making sure that new laws are signed in and that already existing laws are enforced. So constitutionally, an executive order can be used to enforce already existing laws if there is a lack of already existing enforcement of said laws. For example, a law is very lax days of going coming to enforcement, and they want to use an executive order to make sure that, that law is still enforced the way it should be. Constitutionally, they can do that. So were this surprisingly, and why I tell most people where this surprisingly has legal merit is he's not trying to change the law. He's just trying to enforce already existing law and show that the way that the law is already enforced is beyond the original scope of what the law was originally intended for. To where he's instructing the Attorney General and the FTC to rein in the broad scope and the ambiguity of, I believe it was some kind of FTC regulation, I don't know whichever one off the top of my head, but where it gave it like a, a justification for the censorship that's been going on on social media and that he's trying to take away all of that to where social media platforms cannot say, oh, well, we're going to suppress it just because we don't like it. Well, if that's the case, a social media platform has to be a political. They cannot take a particular political stance. Yeah, they can share various political viewpoints without taking a side, but they can suppress certain information as long as it's in the confines of the law. What they've done is they've taken existing law and they've stretched it. So I could say, for example, they've taken a law that's supposed to be like this. This is its scope. And they've turned it to where the scope is like this. It's so broad and it's so ambiguous. What he's trying to do is rein in on that to get rid of the ambiguity, which he can constitutionally do. But there are people who are saying, oh, he's going to lose that argument in court. But here's where he will win if he knows how to play his cards right. Yeah, even though it's a social media platform, it is technically still their property. But where they're running the problem is where they say, we own the website, we own the content, therefore we own the property. 
is where it has legal merit. Yeah, the words that everyone's been using is part of public domain. You cannot copyright a word, a phrase, a slogan, what have you. You, you just you cannot do that. But the words, the thoughts of a particular content, whether it's a tweet, a video, what have you, that's still part of someone's intellectual property. That is still part of their personal property. Now, whether they use that as part of property for means of production, that's a whole other debate for one of them. But at the base core, that is their personal property. Yeah, granted, it's still being allowed to be used under license, as per terms of the use of service, what have you, of social media, where it's used under license. Well, to put that in perspective to where it's easy to comprehend is, say, for example, you know, the NFL owns certain content, and they allow certain content of the NFL to be either used or sold under license, but still yet the content's being sold is only being sold under license. The still proprietary owner of set property is still the NFL. The same thing applies to posts or content that's posted on social media. So at the end of the day, that is still their intellectual property. You cannot claim use of other people's intellectual property and claim it as your own without a conflict. So that's where ultimately the conflict is going to come in and say, you know what? Yeah, you're a social media platform, but when you start suppressing and taking on a political agenda, you're an editor, you're a publisher. Well, they're not coming to you for the use of making money. Now, that can be done in theory, but for the most part, most people who are posting their thoughts, their ideas, they're just sharing it to share with the world. They're not hoping to make money off of it. They're just, you know, sharing they're just to, you know, maybe cause a ruckus or a stir to get people thinking. They're not thinking of the monetary aspect. That's where it has merit, to where they say, you know what? You can't do this. The first bill in the United States Constitution says you have the right to free speech. When we start suppressing information, you're a publisher. You take on a publisher status, you have to change everything about the whole entire social media platform. And that's where, yeah, he's going to win with the executive order with what he can from the confines of the law, but to actually make the change happen to where other things can happen, as a result of the executive order, it's going to have to go before the House and the Senate. They're going to have to create their own stuff. They're going to have to vote, and it's going to have to go to his desk. Now, if it gets challenged in the courts, the Supreme Court will have to make a ruling on it, but anyone that's worth their salt is going to say, you know what, social media... They've been allowed to run amok of things for so long. They've been able to allow this rampant suppression of information and trample on people's rights for so long. We're going to make the change. Even if it's just for the covering of their own ass. They're going to do it. Now, that was a lot, but still, when it comes to these, yeah, but how do, it's not just how clear do we black know, and white things. How do we know for sure that Donald Trump really did take hydroxychloroquine? He's, he's, he lies every day. So it's a possibility he's full of shit. But you're right. Um, you know, it, it, it's personal property. Um, they're both. Why? They're both, what were you saying? They're both guilty of um, censorship and uh, being against the Constitution, First Amendment, whether it be Twitter, CEO of Twitter, or Trump. So, but. But you can't, Twitter cannot, like, I don't think, I just feel that uh, once you allow censorship to take place in one environment, like social media, then it'll go, where, where does it end, really? I mean, it'll go on and on, it'll get worse. Right, and that's part of the issue he's trying to address here. And now, not to say I'm siding with him. I mean, one good deed is not enough to redeem a man of a lifetime of wickedness. But to give credit where credit is due is where the, the scope of the law is this. But that scope of the law has been stretched beyond its original confines. 
that's part of the ambiguity and the gray area. So what they've done is they've exploited a lot of gray areas to justify the suppression of information for corporate fascism. But with the way things are going, where there's almost like this renaissance, if you want to call it, to where where they've seen that, you know, if you give government power that it honestly shouldn't have, they're going to abuse it and they're going to exploit it, period. Right. If you give them power beyond the confines of the U.S. Constitution, they're going to not only take advantage of it, but they're going to abuse it, period. So you're, you're seeing this renaissance-type deal of where you're seeing a restoration of human dignity and human rights. So when people say, oh, that case is going to lose, I'll say, this is what I tell them. I say, like I, I just previously said, you're conditioned to believe and think that. Reality is they still stand a chance at winning. If any lawyers worth their salt, they'll make it win. Which is why I also propose another idea is I'm tired of wearing the masks at work. I'm going to give them until June 30th to get rid of the compulsory wearing of masks. Oh, or if man, it doesn't stop, I'm going to challenge it. And people are like, oh, it's part of the uniform code. You're going to lose. And I say, oh, contraire. The only entire reason why they're making this part of the uniform code is by executive order. Executive order is not a law. The CDC recommends, and I put the of the word recommends you wear. That does not mean you are forced yeah. to wear. Well, one. they recommend. They recommended if you happen to be let if you happen to be less if you have. Look at James. <laughs> yeah, if you happen, <clears throat> if you happen to be less than six feet away from somebody, if you happen to be six feet or farther away, that you don't need the mask. If you're closer than six feet, they recommend for protection of you and the other person the mask. Can I just like say like you said. Can I yeah. Something? I'm worried that all this is not going to last a decade. It's not going to last a year. It's not even going to last six months. It's just going to become another one of those things that everybody was talking about and then it goes away. This whole thing and all these deaths, all these people who went away, uh, this is going to become something that just became another uh, slight in the history books and people did not fucking learn or change anything. Uh, I almost you mean like it like to go on for a long ass time. I almost feel like this also has to go on for a long ass time. I don't know. Uh, for you mean like time. Ebola? Like like Ebola was here today and gone tomorrow. Here today, yeah, gone tomorrow. Where everything was that Ebola, right Ebola, right and then it was it was anthrax. They were talking yeah. about anthrax nonstop. That time they found it in the mail every, every day, every night. Anthrax, anthrax. Well, Shit let me ask you a question. Off the face of the earth. Let me ask you a question. With all with all this peaceful protesting and rioting and everything, do, don't you think these people, don't you think there'll, there'll be a huge spike in coronavirus uh, uh, in, infections? With all, with all, this, with all these tough. people close together? It's, it's tough to say, James. I mean, the, the default answer would, of course, be yes. But then... If you look at uh, people on the left, they they tend to have less impulses than people more on the right. So yeah, nobody, no, nobody, nobody's talking about it at all. You would think that people marching that close together, if they, hey, maybe they're practicing social distancing when they march. I, I don't know. I I I, I think I they it. I think I they it. might be. I think they might be, and I think they were wearing masks. You know, to be honest with you, but but, but you know, took if down they all the pandemic numbers, all the pandemic numbers that CNN was showing throughout right. the state of listen, I, those are all gone now. All right, t talk about talk about your beer. I got to go to the to the I got to go to the restroom. I'm gonna pee. Yeah, I gotta go.
I'll be right back. Hold on. All right. Talk about the beer or something. Or talk about, I don't know, talk about life. Right. Talk about, talk a little red. Talk a little red pill. Some, I'll talk about some uh, life in the minds of a, of a red pill. And how do I do that? I talk about some beer. I talk about some beer, guys. I think that that is the most red pill life thing that any, any sane man can do. This even looks like an unfiltered ale. If you see, if you look clearly inside the glass to all our one trillion viewers out there you can you can almost see that it looks unfiltered uh it's just all that unfiltered goodness just reminding you of an unpasteurized beer it is just very very fresh oh uh, just sniff oh uh, man you are getting just as many fruits as you are hops and that is really the beauty of these kinds of uh ipas IP, ipa doing the childish campino childish campino stands ipa uh, it's IPA because this beer, man, be making anybody smile. It, uh, it could, it could lit a room. It could, it could. Uh, I think it could even, perhaps, even unify crowds. You know, you look at a beer like this, and it's just, so, mm -hmm. it is so crystal fucking clear. It looks like somebody rolled it right out of the fucking cats, and it, it looks like it just was born yesterday. It's it's fucking amazing, and and looks unpasteurized. It looks like an unpasteurized ale. And it just this is incredible. Zero IBU. That doesn't really, that doesn't really impact much for me. Uh, I, I'm not gonna judge a beer based off bitterness alone. I, th this is pretty good. Um, now when it comes to life, beer. <laughs> yes, fur. Burr, burr. Damien, how did you come across beer, my friend? I'm sorry, what? How, how did how do you come across beer? I just go out, look at the local stores, see what they got. If I like it, I buy it. If I don't like it, then I just don't buy it. Right, but how? What got you into beer? What got you? Because what got me into beer was yeah, kind of what you do, seeing all the beer in the shelves and oh, what is this? What is this? And then looking it up on YouTube and seeing all these crazy ass beer reviewers and then getting crazy about it and then wanting to hop on. Uh, what, what got you into the movement, man? All right. Well, the first time I ever drunk beer, I was 10 years old. My, my grandma was making beer battered fish and she left a little bit of uh, Bud Light that she was using for the uh, beer battered fish. I tried a sip of it and I was like, Ooh, that that's nasty. Now, that was when I was just 10 years old. Now, when I was 14, my dad bought me some Budweiser and some Bud Light. I honestly thought light beer at first was pretty disgusting. But when I drunk regular Budweiser, I thought it wasn't all that bad. So, I would sneak, quote-unquote, beer from my dad. I would sneak, like, Budweiser um bush bush light miller high life as well as uh king cobra so i just got introduced to it by my dad. i like that so yeah i mean i just got introduced to drinking beer by him and it just became an acquired taste so when i became 21 and i could legally drink and i could buy whatever i want I started experimenting with a different brand. So I started experimenting with uh, the macro beers first, just trying all the macros to see, you know, what all the anheuser Bush products taste like, what all the, the Miller Coors products taste like, what all the Pabst products taste like. Because when you were under 21, you had to pretty much be at the mercy of whatever they particularly liked to buy for you. So if they like Budweiser, they are probably going to buy you Budweiser. If you didn't like Budweiser, I guess you were just a so well. Well, that was kind of like how it was when I would sneak beer from my dad. And when I became 21, I could just buy whatever I wanted. So I started trying all the macro beers first just to see what all of them were like. Then I went into the craft world just to see, you know, what everything was like. And I've just stuck with beer ever since. Yeah, I've dabbled with wine and liquor ever since, but... Uh, I prefer beer out of beer, wine, and liquor. But if someone gave me some wine or gave me some liquor, 
yeah, I'll try it and I'll give it a fair shake. But really, beer is my thing. Trying to open a wine is like trying to bench a bus, almost. It all it almost is not going to fucking happen, dude. Well, some like um, some really good economy wines that are actually pretty good for the price would be like a Carlo Rossi uh, Taylor. As oh, well no. as, uh, oh, no, James mentioned that wine already. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carlo Rossi, Taylor, and uh, Livingston. Those are some oh, good economy wines. I mean, they're still pretty good for what they are. What about Francis Ford Coppola wine? What about we Francis don't get Coppola? those here. Yeah, we don't get those here. Oh. Yeah. But our liquor stores... Yeah, but our liquor stores here in Tennessee, they, they have some really good selections, to be completely honest with you. Like, um, my wife yeah. showed me this liquor store up in Bristol, and if I go up that way, I'm going to pick up some other ones. They have some really unique Jim Bean flavors, like uh, Jim Bean Apple, Jim Bean Vanilla, Jim Bean Peach, things like oh. that. And it was like, oh, man, that's a that's a pretty good selection. Yeah, I'm whatever liquor. Beer, but answer this question, what? What is it about a liquor store or a craft beer store that just has such a better sense of a selection than uh, than even a grocery store, which still has a pretty good sense, or even a beer alcohol store uh, in general? What like the independent people? Be right back. All right, yeah, I'll answer your question when you get back. I was all I was all alone. Now somebody else gets to be all alone. Be right back, buddy. Uh, oh. All right. Oh shit. We all right. Well, time. anyway, to well, continue with my thought back. from earlier, and then I'll <laughs> go ahead and be quiet about it. Is um, no, no. Here's a re here's a legitimate reason as to why masks should not be mandatory. Is by certain medical conditions, people cannot wear a mask. Like if they have asthma, COPD. They need as much breathable air as they can get. So if someone is willing to, you know, still work with asthma and COPD and they need all that breathable air or if they might need breathing treatments, a mask is not going to help the problem. It's just going to make things that much more oh, worse. They're better off they with a bandana. Are. They're better but off even, with a bandana. Well, even if they wear a bandana, they that's still going to constrict breathable air. But the main point I'm trying to get at is the only reason why it's made compulsory is because of executive orders. Like earlier today, we went to Virginia, and yeah, we saw signs that said face coverings mandatory, but underneath it said if you have a medical medical condition which requires you to not wear a mask, we're going to assume you have medical condition if you don't wear a mask. So, it all things need to be considered. You you cannot force someone to wear a mask if they don't want one, but on the flip side, if someone wants to wear a mask because they feel as though it's part of their, you know, job safety to make them feel as though they have a safer work environment, you cannot legally deny them that, but if someone feels as though, you know, they, they cannot wear a mask because of, like, you know, as I said, asthma, COPD, and this mandatory enforcement or compulsory enforcement jeopardizes their work safety, then it goes both ways. And that's what people are not realizing is it goes both ways. So, yeah, I'll give them until June 30th to get rid of it because if it doesn't, I'm going to challenge mm -hmm. it. I'm going to use that as the premises. Challenge yeah, it. You might uh, not have to go that long, though, because even California is trying to reopen on June 12th. Well, you have Sorry, to be able to breathe. 
I mean, you can't restrict oxygen to the lungs. A person has to be able to breathe. I mean, that's pretty damn important. I mean, especially if an, an asthmatic and the condition, the conditions you mentioned. I mean, I mean, I mean, a person who's an asthmatic would have to have a very loose fitting barrier over their mouth and nose. It would have to be very loose. I mean, uh, if if they were if they were in a position where they had to be closer to other people, if I mean, I mean, if they sanitize their hands and they kept their distance, they can get away with not wearing a mask. I mean, the the the, the mask. Even Fauci said the mask is for people that are within the in the shooting range of respiratory droplets and and that's the only reason for the mask um mm -hmm. uh, if the people happen to be that close if you're not that close there's no medical reason for wearing the mask uh like if somebody talks there's aerosol micro droplets that only go like a two or three feet, maybe a couple feet, and then they go down. Gravity makes them go to the ground. If somebody coughs or sneezes, it's a little farther than that. So, you know. It's only if they don't the cover the sneeze or they don't cover the cough. Now, if they cover the cough or cover the sneeze, you're going to be fine. If. If is a big word. Now, there's a lot of assholes out there that that even before the pandemic, jerk offs that that sneeze and cough out in the open air. I mean, I mean, I, I've seen it. I've seen it. There's there's just just plenty of them. Uh, just like the, just uh, like the <laughs> asshole, just like the asshole in my area that I had a report delivering Amazon packages left my package oh, no. outside today and I, I i says that's it that's why two of my packages were my stolen he's supposed to bring it he's supposed to bring it in the hallway and put it where the mailboxes are he he leaves my package half about 50 percent of the way close towards the the sidewalk on the walkway outside mm -hmm. so all, all so all the porch pirates all the porch pirates you know people with itchy fingers can see it and steal it i one of the one of the deliveries that must have been left outside was the uh, memory foam i order from my beanbag chair mm -hmm. that's what i'm sitting on now I, I need more memory foam because my ass is sinking into the middle of the beanbag chair. <laughs> now, the thing the thing is that Gentlemen, two packages. Go. What hap Well, what happens is Amazon drivers are supposed to are supposed to. Doesn't he have an avatar? Amazon oh. drivers are supposed to, and most of the time they do. They have a rule. They email you a notification immediately after they deliver your parcel. So, mm -hmm. and they send you a photograph of the parcel where they left it. Mm -hmm. So today I got the email notification. I got the, with the photo of the box and I see it outside. And I, and I right away, I, I put my pants on and I ran out there to get it. And I'm like, motherfucker he's supposed to he's not supposed to leave it there so i left instructions on my uh, amazon prime app it says do you want to leave delivery instructions where do you want the packages left i go oh thank god it it says it i says in the mail room because i don't know what to call it it's it's a front you know it, it they said it, it, it you want it left outside you want it left it, at a reception desk, I, I don't have a reception desk. Uh, so I call it, I just called it mail room, which is when you first walk in, it's a hallway and there's uh, mailboxes. You know, at least out of sight, 
out of mind when it comes to the uh, thieves. But uh, they must be hiring people like U UPS uh, uh, warehouses. I mean, UPS loading platforms. They they hire ex cons. You know, they got they got they got every dreg of humanity loading and unloading the trucks for UPS. I know because I used to work for them many years ago. Every dreg of humanity because n nobody else would tolerate that kind of job. People are yelling at you, hurry up and unload that truck. All right. Meanwhile, they're in a Teamsters union. They're they're being they're they're well they're being abused and uh, verbally, and you would think the union delegate would say, "Hey, you can't be abusing our people. The you know they're Teamsters." Maybe, maybe they know that a lot of them are knuckleheads and ex-cons. So maybe that's why the, the, the Teamsters Union don't give a shit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? You can't. I just don't want them left outside because I lost two packages. And, you know, I didn't even receive the two packages that were stolen or lost, I didn't even receive e email confirmation. So I, I didn't yeah. know they were, so that means they were sitting outside because if it, if Amazon says it was delivered and I did not receive email confirmation for it and they're gone, that means the parcels were left outside. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not it's not difficult to be Sherlock Holmes, you know, to figure things out. It's a lot. A lot of life is common sense, you know. And uh, 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 in this case, with you, that you're studying constitutional law, you are a step ahead of a lot of these corporate people, you mm -hmm. know. And Zucker and Zuckerberg, I heard, is having some big problems with his employees. They, they they threaten to walk out. Yeah, I mean, the only reason why Zuckerberg has any kind of merit or status in American society is because the fact he founded Facebook. And to reference one of your jokes you were previously talking about, pencil net, where the only reason why they have any kind of merit or society is because of their money. I mean, if Mark Zuckerberg honestly had not founded Facebook and didn't have money, he'd just be just a regular old schmuck just like me and you. Well, you know what made Facebook unique compared to MySpace, which I actually kind of like. I like MySpace. Because it was pretty good. I like Tom. Remember Tom, the founder of MySpace? With oh, the, yeah. With the white Tom. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tom. Tom. You know like what? Yeah, he had like so many more followers and friends on MySpace than probably the CEO of Twitter and Mark Zuckerberg could probably ever have combined. You, you know, he 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 replied. He replied to me, Tom of MySpace. He actually he actually replied to me. I sent him something. I had a couple questions, and he replied to me. I mean, he was very nice. Um, uh, I was able to use animations. I was able to custom make the background of my profile anything I wanted. And animations worked. Everything I, I had, I had red brick. I had a, a bat cave background one time. I had brick. I had, uh, uh, I had twinkling stars like the universe. I had that as a background to my profile. And I could put animations galore. Facebook, everything was plain, drab, blue, and white. I mean, I can't even I can't even use night vision. I mean, uh, what do you call uh, a black background mm -hmm. on Facebook? I I could do it. I, I did it on Twitter. But, Wait, don't uh, they have yeah, Facebook space. dark or something like that, to where you can have a black background? I don't know, but if but if they do, tell me where I could find it because I'm I think sick of I looking at here, that. I, I think I know how. Let me uh, let me pull that up. Okay, so when I'm on my computer, I usually have multiple tabs running because I've got Facebook, I've got 
StreamYard running. I've got Yahoo Mail, and I've also got YouTube running, just in case there's any new notifications on Facebook. Yeah, but, me too. Um, let me see here. I've got Facebook pulled up. Let me see how I can do that. I know they gave I got me Google. Option. I got Google Dark. I Google has a dark where you have a black background. <sighs> They had an experimental phase at one point to where you could change it to Facebook Dark to where you had a black background, which is what I've got now. But I'm trying to see, I'm trying to experiment with the Facebook settings to see how you can. Oh, now I know. Okay. So if you're on a desktop, but you can still do this on mobile. So. Um, if you're on a mobile device like a smartphone or a tablet, if you go into the internet settings of whatever particular browser you're using, you can switch it to desktop mode, and it will allow you to view it as if you're viewing it on a computer. All right, so if you got your main Facebook pulled up, you know, you see your main profile and what have you, well, if you see, like, your name where it would say, like, well, mine says Gary, and in your instance, probably say James, and to the right, you see, like, plus, which is create, then the middle is messenger, and then the middle to the right is notifications. Well, if you go one more over where it has, like, a down button where it says account, well, if you click that... It'll give you the option, or no, no, no. For some reason, it's not allowing it. But if you click on your name, where it'll say like on yours, it'll say like James P. Madonna. It would say select or see your profile. That'd be on top. Well, if you scroll down, it says um, privacy settings, help and support, and then down below it, it says dark mode. If you click it to the right, it'll give you the black profile. Now, if you switch it back against dark mode, it'll give you the white profile. But down below it, it does give you the option to switch to Facebook Classic. So, which is still very cool. Oh, so to the right of notifications, look for the arrow. Pointing down. No, no, no. I, I tried that. Forget that. What you do is when you have your main Facebook profile up and you you know you click on your name, which will be the farthest to the left. And mine is, it says Gary, but in your instance it would say James. Well, if you click it, it will bring up the uh, variety of different ones. But if here's what's weird. If you click on your name, it'll close everything but if you look to the arrow to the right where it says account then it brings it back up facebook is making like no sense but it'll be the third or fourth one down where it says dark mode and you can switch it over but it still gives you the option to go back to facebook classic now something else i noticed here about the new facebook ever since it switched to this new mode. Now, if you switch down to privacy and settings, which I'm getting ready to select now, if you pull that up, you know you have your settings like general security and login, your Facebook information, and you select privacy, there's a option of Facebook cookies which a lot of internet browsers and also internet pages use cookies for internet traffic to collect data but i remember i turned mine off but i'm trying to think of where you can turn that off because when you select the new option to upgrade to the new facebook it turns that automatically on but that's how Facebook and social media collects data on you, which is part of the Facebook Analytica scandal, where it illegally collected data to influence a political election. Oh, I, and you know, I heard if you shut off Bluetooth, nobody could spy on you. I don't know how true that is. 
Yes and no. Okay, so Bluetooth allows you to connect to, like, let's say you have a, a modern-day vehicle and you want to connect it to um, the radio to play, like, modern radios, like, let's say, Sirius XM or uh, what have you, or if you want to connect your phone to have Bluetooth hands-free connected devices, which some states mandatory allow, but... Tennessee passed that, but that's now being challenged for being connected to that. But no. my you my Bluetooth is shut off. But if they wanted to, they could just log into your phone's information, turn on the the microphone, and also turn on the listening device and the speaker, and that's how they can spy on you. So, yeah, Bluetooth goes a long way to not connect to smart devices, but that's only like 75 to 80% of them not being able to spy on you. Oh, okay, so it, it, makes it, it makes it easier for them to do so when you turn right. on Bluetooth. Right, because I was explaining to my aunt earlier about 5G and why it's so dangerous and why we should oppose it to where if you think the already existing spying measures are bad, 5G is going to be a lot worse. A lot, a lot worse. So as I, was, as I was telling her, if you see people saying, oh, 5G this, 5G that, they're just conspiracy nuts. Bullshit. I explained to her exactly why they're pushing 5G and why it's so dangerous and why we honestly should oppose it and people have opposed it and it's not been rolled out. Yeah, well, a lot of new information came out about, let's say, like what? This, this pandemic situation. I mean, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for the Italian uh, Medical Profession Association and what they did, it wasn't the United States that were going to tell the people the real truth. We had to get it internationally. The same mm -hmm. thing with hydroxychloroquine. It was, it, was, uh, it was used internationally. And then one doctor in the Midwest decided to use it the right way. And he says, he says, people that were severe on ventilators went from that to asymptomatic within several hours of getting zinc and hydroxychloroquine. And he swear by it. And he was, uh, he was a guest on uh, Fox News. And uh, Mike Pence watched the show. And that's how Donald Trump learned about hydroxychloroquine. Because Pat Pence watched the, the interview of this oh, doctor boy. from the Midwest. Yeah, so for we, I mean, for all, for all we know, he might be taking it properly. You know, he, and he might not be, uh, he might not be spilling spilling the beans to the world to the country, because maybe he is he got paid off by Big Pharma to push for the vaccine. You never know. Mm -hmm. I, well, I think Donald Trump is definitely very selfish and greedy. So if it supports him and his interests in terms of making money, he's going to go for it. Which is why I want to say, if you people voted for Trump, you have been extremely duped. I mean, yeah, he used yeah. a lot of, um, what's the word? A lot of like populist rhetoric in order to get elected, but that's how he got elected. Now, in actual practice, when it came to the evil selfishness and greediness that he's part of the class of in the United States, he has blatantly showed that he's really a part of that in the people's face where it's honestly to the point where it's like, it's, it's, it's clear as the nose on one's face to where I mean, yeah, people who voted for him because they honestly felt like they were disenfranchised and he was a disenfranchisement voice, 
he's completely betrayed that particular camp. And he's betrayed that in many different ways, which is why you're going to have diehard loyal supporters of Donald Trump no matter what. Just right. like the same way you had the diehard loyal supporters of Obama, same thing with Bush and Clinton, H.W. Bush, Reagan, what have you. But that's only going to be X amount of the population because of so you whatever you reason. Like you, like but what I find very ironic is, you know, I've been paying attention to Jay's videos and even he, yeah, he voted for Trump in 2016, but when it comes to 2020 election, he says he's not going to vote for him again. So if he's turning people like Jay against him, Donald Trump is really making this extremely uphill battle to the point where he's got to really stand a snowball chance in hell of winning. Well, his own party thinks he's bonkers and, and mentally unstable. His own party. I mean, uh, uh, he, uh, there might be a huge turnout this November. And if there, if there's that big of a turnout, a lot of Republicans are going to lose their, their seats. Mm -hmm. You know who I hope loses his seat? Mr. Turtle face. Oh, Mitch I, McConnell. Oh my God. He he is he's got corruption written all over his ugly face. Right. I mean, that's what I was saying with the previous tarot card reading that we did for the state of affairs. Is just there's too much going on. Even the cards themselves are becoming confused. Where they're just like, there's honestly so much going on that we don't have a definitive answer. Because one thing can change this and change that to where it's just honestly, there's no definitive way as to where things are going to go. So, I mean, there's only so much accuracy in terms of predictability and information that's out there because one thing can change this or change that. I mean, Donald Trump had his chance of winning the 2020 election. And he blew it. He completely blew it. The only way he would have stood a snowball chance in hell of winning is if he would have used the National Guard against the actual police force against its own citizens. That would have been the only way he would have stood a chance of winning the election. But did he do that? No, he didn't. He did the complete opposite. Well, the fact that he's done the complete opposite, now Democrats are going to use their their power they already have against the Republican faction to gain brownie points. So it's like a, a tit for tat. It's like one makes an X in tic-tac-toe, the other one makes an O and blocks the other. So that's why, honestly, now it's so unpredictable. It's honestly to the point well, where you don't know who's going to win. Well, he also doesn't listen to scientists, the experts, doctors. He doesn't listen to, to anybody with expertise except his own mind. Right, you know, right. Uh, he well, thinks I mean, uh, uh, global warming is, is fake. Anybody who criticizes him is fake, is fake news. Uh, he tells them to their face. Uh, he's... Um, He's very, um, he's like a, like a pinball in a pinball machine. He's all, he's like really a pathological or a deliberate liar or both. Uh, he accused at the beginning was at the beginning. It was hilarious, but not anymore. Of course, like, like when he first, when he first took office, when he, First took office, he accused Barack Obama of spending too much time on the golf course, and he he beat Obama by a mile when it came to going to the golf course. Yeah, and I mean, I've gone, I've played 
putt putt, which is mini golf. I mean, yeah, that's fun, but regular golf, no. Regular I'm not, golf. I'm not is chasing a little ball in ninety, in ninety, in ninety degree weather. I'm gonna I'm gonna be chasing a little ball of, over, uh, you know, between eighteen holes, and and going like this, like from the heat and humidity. No way. Oh no, 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 no way. But that's what I was saying. I mean, I could I see mean, myself. You know, I could see myself playing billiards. You know, and at a pool table inside air conditioning. I could see myself fishing. Uh, I could, uh, miniature golf is, is nice to bring the kid, you know, family, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, I, I play ping pong. Um, I mean, I've had some not so fun experiences playing mini golf, like, uh, not to tell on myself, on, but <laughs> me and the wife, before we got married, when we were still dating, we went to this place called Thunder Valley, which was in Roanoke, Virginia, where we still both lived in Virginia, and I ended up chasing my golf ball into this particular body of water, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, you won, I'm not chasing my ball, so, and then I, I can, hit your ball into the woods, <laughs> no, I hit my own ball into the body of water, and you technically won. So yeah, you are you supposed to hit? Rally. Are you supposed to use a, 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 a like a wedge? Are you supposed to use like a nine iron or, or a wedge and get it out of the water? Some, something like that. I mean, honestly, I don't know how to play golf. I honestly just don't care about the rules of golf. I mean, yeah, I'm okay with basketball and football and soccer and things like that because those are, could be fairly decent sports. But golf. Golf is like the most boring thing I've ever played, but mini golf is not all that bad. But when it comes to bourgeois parliamentarianism and bourgeois politics, they do a fairly decent job of fooling the American people of the pot calling the kettle black. And that's not a racist term. That's just the old Southern term of, you know, a pot and a kettle are usually black. So it's like one trying to call black when the other one knows it's black. You know, it's like a hypocritical sense. It's just a, it's an old Southern term of being hypocritical, but that's all this entire thing has been. is just one person being the pot calling the kettle black. So yeah, Trump has always been harping on Obama for this and that and the other, but then yet he turns right around and does the exact same thing. And it's just like, because, you know, of, despite what you want to think of Obama, Obama was a bourgeois tool. Bush was a bourgeois tool. Clinton was, an, was a bourgeois tool. H.W. Bush was a bourgeois tool. Trump is a bourgeois tool, just like all the others have been. Despite the want to say the, the, the oh we're the dissenters of this that was bullshit. So yeah, Trump has been able to fool the American people of you know Obama spending so much time on the golf course, but then yet look at how much time he himself has spent on the golf course. I hate golf as much as the next person, but still. It's the pot I mean, calling the kettle the, black. What do they call the definition of insanity? Doing the exact same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Right? That, but also here's where that thing becomes a little bit different. See, if you know you're crazy and you say you're crazy, you're not. But then yet... If you say that you're not crazy, but then yet you are crazy, you are crazy. Oh, Sad that's like when true. that's like when George Costanza, um, uh, Jerry Seinfeld asked George, "How do you beat a lie, a polygraph test?" And he says, "If you if you believe that your lie is true, reality, 
then it is not true when you take that then it is true when you take the polygraph test if you believe in the lie to be to be the reality yeah and that actually has some merit believe it or not so when people say put them on the polygraph test i'm just like do you not understand how human behavior works so the polygraph test works on a base of series of reactions, responses, emotions to particular stimuli. So like you said, if someone believes that they're telling the truth, even though it could be completely bullshit, as long as they believe they're telling the truth and they're not lying, they could trick their brain into thinking they're telling the truth. It's going to appear as though that they're not lying and they're telling the truth. So, the polygraph yet had good intentions to detect liars, but like just about anything and everything there is out there, people are going to find a, a workaround and they're going to find a way to cheat, undermine the very same mechanism that's supposed to defeat that. And they're going to beat them at their own game. So, good intentions, yes, but in actual practicality, it just didn't work. You know, it's like it's like it's like all the evidence points to the existence of extraterrestrials, but no one has really well. There's a lot of proof. They they just they just the governments of the world don't want to reveal it. There actually is evidence, but as far as the people go, the average person, and they watch the shows, they would logically assume that, well, all the evidence is pointing to their existence, therefore I believe they exist. And then if the person says, well, do you have any evidence to prove they exist? And and if the person says, I don't have any evidence, but I honestly believe that they exist without even without proof. Like, in other words, if, if you really believe something strongly enough, that's what George Costanza was trying to tell Jerry. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like, like a delusion, like... Like, uh, like, let's say Trump, who is crazy, of course, but thinks he's normal, uh, comes out with a statement that he's a direct descendant from the continent, the lost continent of Atlantis. He was an Atlantean king ten thousand years ago, and he really, and he really believed. It. Well, if he's if he's delusional and mentally unstable enough, he might honestly believe that and pass the polygraph. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, because so, like I said, the, the way the polygraph picks up is when someone is telling the truth, it's going to be able to pick up on it. But if someone is blatantly lying, it's going to pick up on it. Now, that was when technology caught up with the times. Well, now technology and the times have advanced beyond that. And it's the point to where now it's just if someone believes they're telling the truth, they can pass the poly. Even if they are playing the line, but as long as they believe they're telling the truth, they can pass it. That was the either the known unknown or the unknown unknown X factor that was failed to be taken into account when it came to that. Which is why, yeah, at the time, it was good intentions, but just like so many different things, there was always going to be a workaround. Now, as long as there's always the evil malicious intent to create a workaround to undermine a good intention, it's going to happen. But 
the only way now that the poly is going to be able to stand a chance is if it's able to detect that when someone is lying and they want to pass it off as truth, it can trick it. That's really the, about the only way that's going to be able to happen. But until the technology kept, keeps up with material conditions, it's just not going to work. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. James B. Madonna here. Uh, we've gotten into a lot of pro progressive left-wing politics, which is good. Uh, current news topics. We discussed many different current news topics. We had some red pill talk a little bit about the hypocritical, fake, phony, fraud, equality of today's feminism, as well as ghosting in the dating scene and what that was, what, that, what exactly that meant. We, that was the very beginning of the show. Uh, and boisterous beer banter. We did some craft beer reviewing uh, with uh, Michael Hilton of San Francisco, California, as well as Damian DeWolf Owens on Steel Reserve Malt Liquor. Uh, well, and that Steel Reserve was is classified as a lager, actually. I take that back. It's a strong lager. Um, so we had a pretty good variety here. Um, it's a good thing Damien Owens had plenty of stream yard hours because we had a problem with uh, going live on Facebook. Too many glitches. Uh, Michael Hilton and myself, who has departed. Um, and, uh, we're being streamed right now on, um, uh, our Facebook Progressive Discussions page. Okay, uh, instead of being on YouTube. Now, this Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we will be doing the uh, Progressive Piranha, uh, Progressive Dis Discussions uh, political show, followed by the State of the Union tarot card reading and the Copper Divining Rods Combining progressive politics with mysticism. That will be streamed on YouTube. Right now, we're streamed on Facebook, Progressive Discussions. And uh, Michael Hilton uh, gets nervous when we go deep. We, had, we started going deep. Instead of talking about beer and girls, and he, he split. But... He hung around long enough to do his, you know, his review. Uh, oh, well, yeah. yeah I mean, it's just, it is what it is. He's, yeah, he's, well, I was going to say he's a young guy. He looks 18, but he's 27, believe it or not. Uh, um, yeah, because no, no person is going to make themselves older. So I kind of believe he was telling the truth. So uh, uh, the, the one thing about Eric, he will get into political conversations in length. Mm -hmm. Like he's not, yeah, he, because when, when you guys had a split, well, it was getting late. He wanted to talk about the riots, the looting, the everything, everything. And he talked and then, and then he made uh, some hot and spicy Korean noodle soup in the kitchen and he propped up his phone and, he decided, oh, I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to make uh, Italian carbonara with ramen noodles. I'm not mm -hmm. going to do it. You know. And then he, but he put the chili, the chili powder in anyway, and he said it was real hot. But, uh, you know, I learned how to make carbonara. I thought there was cream in it, like fettuccine Alfredo. But now you put a raw egg, a lot of Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. and you melt it, keep on stirring it. You put bacon bits in it. And um, if you want, like the restaurant, you can put peas in it. Mm -hmm. Well, the restaurants put peas and bacon. But I, I thought there was cream, like heavy cream in, in the carbonara. But 
Not really. It's really egg and Parmesan. So, you know, you learn something from just about anybody. Oh, yeah. Like, um, like one of Jay's, uh, one of the people that sometimes goes on Jay's show, uh, Thrash Metal from um, Colorado. He's mm-hmm. the one that told me about Panda uh, uh, antivirus, uh, free, and it's free. Mm-hmm. It, it's free, and, and it's great. You know, you can, it's the only free antivirus where you can, you can set up automatic scanning. You can set up a schedule. You can't do it with AVG. You can't do it with Avast, at least not yet. But you can do it with Panda. And he swear by it. So I, I downloaded on it and it's true. It works great. Uh, I don't have to manually do a scan. I, I have it set on a schedule. Every, every night in the middle of the night, the desktop does a scan. And uh, it's pretty good. You know, it does the spyware and everything. Uh, as far as Windows uh, uh, security essentials or whatever they call it, uh, it I had Trojans in, infest my desktop, and it got right by the Windows 10 um, uh, security essentials, mm-hmm. whatever you call it. Yeah. Windows, Windows Defender, it got right by them. So the Windows program failed and the free Panda, which is on filehippo.com, worked. So, so, so much for the big corporations products. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, we've learned not to trust the mainstream media at all. Oh, no. That's why I very rarely watch it. I only I only listen to I only listen to the uh, the the pandemic update by Andrew Cuomo because he has a personality. He's uh he's entertaining. The other guy, New Jersey, Phil Murphy, is not entertaining. He's very boring. He yeah, has no. Just, he, yeah, he's yeah, he is. But like I said, honestly, with that, I've just I've moved on. I honestly just do not care about that. It's old news. It's fake news. Honestly, just don't give two flying shits about it. Well, they now don't talk. Have, about they don't talk about it. Yeah, it's just like, it was old news. I mean, yeah, they had people so afraid. But now they've milked it for what it's worth. They can't milk any more of it, so now they're just going to move on. That's just how bourgeois media works. But here's what I also find very interesting about Donald Trump. He's only a level 54. How has he not gone down yet? I'm honestly finding it so hard, and and believe you me, I'm trying to find every justification in my very analytical mind to see how someone can support him, and even I'm just like, how? How can you support this? Even, all right, play devil's advocate. Okay, say we're extreme, very right-wingers. And we're trying to support this guy. And it's like, but wait, hang on. Let, let's, let's pump the brakes for a second. Even though he is completely undermined, gone right by his executive order of banning bump stocks, knowing damn well not that implicated, and then yet we're still supporting him? No, arrows. How? Just because we have an irrational hatred of Democrats, which, you know, both sides in terms of equal justification of hatred are equally just, but just because of one sided biasness? He's running. He's not coming that out. Makes well, he's, no in, sense. He's, in favor of, he's in favor of a police state, obviously. He wants to right. send in tanks. Yeah. Right. But. You know, that goes against the very core base that he, his supporters have supported. There we go. You know, he was 
you know, his supporters, regardless of whether they're male, female, whatever it is they want to identify with, they voted for him because of they felt this very same thing was going to happen under Obama. Well, the very same fears they felt as it was going to happen under Obama happened under him. And it's just like, okay, so you are afraid of this person doing it, but not afraid of this person doing it. And yet, you know, you, you put aside your fear of this and that, saying, oh, this person's going to be better, but then yet no, that I person you come is going to be better did the very same thing you were so rightfully afraid of. And it's just, what? what the hell, man? What honestly is going through these people's minds to make them think, you know, things are going to be better with just, you know, this person getting into power, knowing how the bourgeois apparatus works. No matter how you shake it, no matter how you shake it, both major parties, both major parties are, are, are controlled by the oligarch puppet masters, and that's it. I, I don't know. The problem is that Americans are brainwashed to vote for the two major parties. This is the mm -hmm. problem we have. They even if 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 even if a true progressive a far left wing person is on the ballot, mm -hmm. whether it be the whether it be the Green Party or an independent, these people in this country er, come time every election, they feel that a career politician that's either a Republican or a Democrat is the only person qualified <coughs> qualified to be president of the United States. In their minds, just like people actually thought during the campaign that a, a former CEO or a CEO of a corporation, oh, he would make a great president because he has a successful company and he's a CEO. Uh, what makes you think a CEO is gonna worry about working be concerned about working for the mainstream or the poor or the right. middle class. All right, which is where they've bought into this delirium of, okay, so therefore he knows how to run a business, therefore he knows how to run a government. Well, unless we live under true fascism, that's not going to be true, despite what most people want to think or believe. So, to play devil's advocate, okay, so we have a true fascist government to where there is no line between, you know, the corporations, the government, they're basically the same, the line is blurred, there really is no way to differentiate between the two. How, in all honesty, would you be able to still hold people accountable for one's actions, regardless of how good, bad, or in between it might be. So, even if, you know, Donald Trump still advocated for this, and even if he were to win the American Bill, you know, corporate fascism is still going to be the way to bring rain in on all the problems that we've had. How alone is this going to fix the problem? And this is where he severely lacks. Not only with his inherent, you know, bumbly wordedness that he and Trump both share. I'm talking about Joe Biden and Donald Trump here. And honestly, when it comes to selling bullshit, I'm talking like, you know, grade A American bullshit. The grade A American bullshit, they just can't sell. But the only American bullshit they can still sell nowadays is American grade F or American grade D bullshit at the best guards. Not only for the Trump camp, but for Biden's camp as well. 
So people have honestly been conditioned and trained to think, vote for the lesser two evils. Well, at the end of the day, you're only conditioned and thought to think that. Because it's been grounded and pounded in your head to think that way. But that's honestly not the only way you can honestly think. At the end of the day, you're still a human being. Free thoughts are not illegal yet, but the way things are going, free thoughts and free thinking is going to be illegal at some point. But well, the lesser of the two evils is still evil. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna get. I mean, at the end of the day, lesser of two evils, it's still evil, and that's just what people do not understand. I mean, yeah, Donald Trump is evil, but then yet Joe Biden is evil. It's like, okay, so you vote for a corporate fascist or you vote for a fucking pedophile. You're not really standing for, even in the most remote, strictest of what America stands for, you're not even voting for that. And it's just, there's just so much demoralization in terms of what America really stands for. In fact, you know, not just with America, but take any country besides. You know, North Korea, Cuba, what have you. What country really stands for what they really believe in? None. The United States doesn't even really believe in what it originally was founded upon. Even that, Americans don't even really believe or stand for. Much less freedom or even standing against oppression or tyranny, even in the most simplest of regards. That's just, that's nowhere. Nowhere to be seen. Like, even to most Americans, that's a, a foreign concept that they, they themselves don't even understand. Yeah, even, even, even a country that claims to be communist or socialist, but in reality is a, a, a military dictatorship, a, a regime, even, mm -hmm. even that is far from Karl Marx's original writings. I mean, exactly. every, every, everything has, everything eventually becomes corrupted when it comes to human nature, uh, 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 whether it be capitalism or whether it be socialism. Now, the Scandinavian countries, they seem to be very stable, relatively quiet, happy people. I mean, mm -hmm. they have pretty good laws. Um, they, um, they're, they're healthy people. I, I know that they, they, and, 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 you know, they take care of the mainstream very well. Uh, even, even, uh, prime minister Justin Trudeau of Canada, um, you know, I mean, it's not perfect up there, but listening to him speak about the situation in the United States and Donald Trump, the guy's pretty. The guy's pretty good. Um, you know, I mean, um, there's there's some good apples out there. Um, not yeah. a lot, but there's but, some. There's some. Yeah, there are some, but getting to Justin Trudeau, I'm just like, so the way he's advocating with his assault weapons ban is he's trying to follow like with what a lot of Democrats and a lot of authoritarian thugs are trying to push is taking away the means to fight against an oppressive and tyrannical government in Canada to where even if the people... You know, may not want to take on things in an American sense, but, you know, they feel as though their government is overstepping their bounds and their reach to where they can fight their own battles in the ways they see fit. They're taking away the very means that stops that from happening, which is why I'm glad that people in Canada are stepping up and saying, you know what, we already have strict gun laws. They're saying enough's enough. 
These strict gun laws honestly have no effect on our crime rate whatsoever. I mean, yeah, we have universal health care and things like that, and that's what makes us better than other first world developed nations, but they're they're completely arguing it from the wrong stance. I mean, yeah, Canada has a position of power to articulate and argument their stance in the right way, but by doing this, they're completely fucking themselves over. And that's just what people do not realize is, yeah, you can have all these really nice things out of a particular country or particular government to care for your people, but if you have no means of defending that to where, if I could say, if a particular you know, government or any particular group of society decides they want to strip that away from you, regardless of where it comes from, and you have no means to defend that, then it's meaningless and pointless. It really is. So if he really stands for what he says he wants to say he's standing for, he's doing it completely wrong. Yeah, well, yeah, because the, 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 the citizens can't can't defend themselves against a rogue government with I'm still listening, go ahead. With hunting with hunting rifles. You know what I mean? It, it's like it's like a it's like a peace shooters uh, against a rogue government's military and what they have. Uh, you know, I mean, now people are realizing the importance of the Second Amendment. Now, like you said a while back, the problem is if if the militias that are getting ready to defend against the rogue government are becoming like a police state and attacking the, the peaceful protesters and being anti-constitutional, then we have a big problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you can't, don't say you're a constitutionalist and, um, and you're and you're prepared to fight the rogue government, rogue government, and then you are bullying and attacking people that are just utilizing their First Amendment rights. Mm -hmm. So anyway, any, anyway, we better wrap this up. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, it's almost like quarter three. So yeah, I guess we can wrap it up here. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that this book I have for so long. Okay, yeah. what about that? By Eden Gray, Mastering the Tower by Eden Gray. It's pretty, pretty comprehensive, and uh, there's a lot of information about each card and uh, also a lot of layouts, uh, different layouts, uh, like answering yes and no questions, and there's a Hungarian method. It's like a whole bunch of variations. So it's a nice little paperback by Eden Gray. And, uh, and uh, I'm just brushing up on it, being that I have the Marseille deck just sitting here collecting dust until mm -hmm. I dust it. Um, I'm, getting, I'm getting another pyramid uh, made of uh, Labradorite, which is supposed to be from meteors. It's it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a uh, semi precious uh, gem or stone from another world. It's it's actually meteor, uh, ancient meteor material, and it's it's stunning. Mm -hmm. If you look it up, you'll see what I mean. It has this iridescent sheen to it, uh, like 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 a, like a like the like like the blue on a peacock feather. It's really amazing. Like if you look at it, but mm -hmm. it, it's 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 ancient me meteor material, um, and um, and it'll add to the collection. And then I got smoky quartz for certain reasons. You're supposed to keep it by your front door. Um, I got Palo Alto wood from from uh, the, the Amazon jungle. Um, 
you burn it like people that burn sage to get rid of negative energy, bad spirits. Uh, but it has an amazing smell. I mean, even even if you don't get close to it. But, um, you know, we got the humidity. It's here. Summer, summer weather oh, yeah. is here. Oh, yeah, it's here. So, yeah, so we'll wrap it up. And uh, I think uh, tomorrow Jay's doing a super inclusive. I mean, I'm Another off tomorrow, but I'm going to be busy all day, so I, I might see the stream, or I might see the last little bit of it, but I'm probably going to be too busy to really to really see anything. So I'll probably catch you Sunday. All right. I, I'll, I'll see you in cyberspace. All right. See you. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night.